Okay, we're still in the appendicular skeleton, and now we're going to talk about the upper limbs, and the upper arm bone is called the humerus, and what we're going to look for is the head of the humerus, and this would be the ball of, the, of a ball and socket joint. Now, looking at that, okay, so again, we're looking at the upper arm area here, and then this area right here, this rounded area that fits into the glenoid cavity we talked about, is the head of the humerus. Okay. Next area we're going to look at is the forearm region, which we have two bones that are in the lower arm or forearm region, the ulna and the radius. And then in the ulna, we want to look at something called the trochlear notch and the olecranon process. Okay, so the smaller of the two bones, the ones that's actually on the thumb side, is the radius. And it kind of looks like a nail. There's a sharp point of the nail. There's the top of the nail you'd hit with a hammer. And then the ulna, which is on the elbow side and the little finger side, looks more like a wrench because you've got like this C shape of like the portion of a wrench that you would fit onto a, a lug nut or something. So, so um, we have this, the back of this area right here is actually your elbow, which is called the olecranon process. And... And this U-shape area is called the trochlear notch because it actually fits around part of part of your humerus called the trochlea. So anyway, the little indention there, the big indention there is a trochlear notch. The back of that is literally your olecranon process, which is which is actually your elbow. Okay, the next area we're going to look at is the wrist and hand. The bones of the wrist are called carpals. The bones of the fleshy part of your, of your hand beyond the carpals are called metacarpals. And then your fingers are called phalanges or a phalanx as an individual. And then they have three parts to them. Your thumb is called pollux, but it only has two parts to them. So let's look at that. Okay, the wrist area is called carpals and you've probably heard of carpal tunnel syndrome, which is inflammation in a band that covers these, usually due to repetitive motions. Each of these eight bones do have names, but you're not required to know them. But if you take my Bio 141 class, we'll go over those. So these are carpals. Meta means beyond. So notice these bones through here, this being the thumb side, numbered from the one to five. So this would be my first metacarpal, second metacarpal, third metacarpal, fourth metacarpal, fifth metacarpal. And then beyond the metacarpals are the phalanges or fingers and thumb. Now notice the thumb only has two bones, whereas the fingers have three bones in them. And we name those bones kind of by our directional terms. The ones that are closest to the metacarpals we say are the proximal phalange, the middle phalange, and the distal. So here again I've got a proximal, middle, distal, proximal, middle, distal, proximal, middle, distal. Then here I've just got a proximal and a distal, no middle, because I only have two bones in my thumb. Now again, don't confuse the metacarpals with the phalanges. These bones are the bones in the fleshy portion of your hand. So if I were to refer to that bone right there, I would basically say the distal phalange of the second metacarpal. Okay, so anyway, but all you need to realize, these are carpals, these are metacarpals, and then these are phalanges with the proximal, middle, and distal area to them. Okay, now we're in the lower section of the body. We're in the pelvic girdle and the lower limbs. So the pelvic girdle is a region. It's made up of a, a, a actually a fusion of three bones. The ilium, ischian, and pubis come together to form the os coxae. Coxa means hip. Okay, and then you're going to have two different os coxal bones to make up the whole pelvis. And then what joins those two areas is called the pubic symphysis. And uh, we'll look at that. So the coxal or hip bone, this whole region right here, is actually made up of three bones. The top portion of it is the ilium, the bottom, um, or actually the back area of it, the back rounded area of it is the ischium. And then the front kind of sharp pointed area is the pubis. And then this piece of cartilage that joins this ilium area, or excuse me, this coxal bone area to this coxal bone area, that's the pubic symphysis. 
that actually there are hormones that will cause it to loosen during childbirth. Now keep in mind that this area right through here is the sacrum and there's the coccyx coming off of it. And this is actually part of the axial skeleton. So notice that this, this area made up of the three fused bones and this area made up of the three fused bones called the coxal bones actually join to the axial portion, the sacrum. All right, but this whole thing is called the pelvic girdle. So again, upper portion ilium, pointed front area pubis, rounded back area ischium, and this piece of cartilage that holds them together is called the pubic symphysis. Okay, let's look at some specific portions of this ilium. The first thing is the iliac crest or the ridge of the ilium. So notice this outer boundary here that's actually thickened and separated from the rest of the ilium here. This is the iliac crest. Okay, we're going to look at the ischial tuberosity, the superior, uh, excuse me, anterior superior iliac spine, posterior superior iliac spine. We're going to look at these on a different picture. And then the acetabulum, which that actually means vinegar cup. That's basically the socket that the head of the femur fits into. But let's look at these examples. Here's a good picture of how the oscoxal bone is divided up into the ilium, the top half of the oscoxal bone, the back part of the oscoxal bone, the rounded area is the ischium, then the front pointed area is the pubis. Okay, now this area right here on the back of the ischium is a thickened area. And we can see this thickened area here is the ischial tuberosity. This kind of sharp point right here, which is on this side is right here. That's on the anterior or front of the oscoxal bone. So it's the anterior superior because it's above that sharp point. So that's the anterior superior iliac spine. Here it is, anterior superior iliac spine. Now, right back through here, is the anterior, excuse me, posterior superior iliac spine, because down through here is the posterior inferior iliac spine. So looking at this again, you can see the anterior superior iliac spine, the anterior inferior iliac spine, the posterior superior iliac spine, and the posterior inferior iliac spine. But what you can also see here in this region, the socket area is the acetabulum, you can see it right there in that picture. And of course, that means vinegar cup, but that's where the head of the femur fits in. So that's like the ball and socket area of the hip bone. And this would be the socket portion. You can even see in this picture, you can see the head of the femur fitting into the acetabulum. There are differences between male and female pelvises. So let's say we were detectives and we found the remains of a skeleton and maybe part of it was missing, but we did find the actual yeah, pelvis region. We could pretty much look at it and look for these things and pretty much determine if we had a male or female, even if this was the only part of the skeleton that we had left. So one thing, male, the male pelvises are normally heavier and thicker. Okay. Um, then we have uh, what's called a pelvic opening that's narrower and heart-shaped, and a pelvic opening that is wider and oval. So let's look at that.